The next thing to tackle is, of course, our logo. And we want it to be centered in the screen in all orientations and device sizes. So let's first bring it to the middle where we want it so we can see these margin lines pop up. And now that it's bang in the middle, we have two options, right? We could simply go ahead and do what we learned before, which is where we select it and add the constraints so that it's pinned to the edges of the super view. Um, but this is not going to look very good when we turn to landscape because it's unable to have 300 from the top and 300 from the bottom because now that the phone is in landscape, there isn't so much vertical space. So let's hit Command Z to undo all of those constraints. So we're now left with our Apri logo without any constraints. Instead, let's go ahead and click on the alignment button here and align it to be horizontally in the container and vertically in the container. So let's add those two constraints. And now when we turn to landscape, you can see it works just perfect. It behaves exactly the way we want it to. Now that's pretty easy. And it means that we're leaving the phone to work out the size of the screen that it's being rendered on and place the element in the center, even if it's on an iPad or on a iPhone 4 device. So when we think about adding constraints, we can think about it in terms of pinning, where we add these constraints that define the distance between our element and the containing view. And when we turn our phone, in this case, the landscape, it'll try to fit it still to the edges. But of course, some of these will have to break because we can no longer afford 100 pixels, say in this case, from the top and 100 pixels from the bottom. There isn't that amount of vertical space anymore. The alternative to this pinning method is by using the alignment technique, where we say that we want to align our button horizontally in the center of our screen, as well as vertically in the center. So now when our phone turns, our button is going to forever remain in the middle. Now we can also use a combination of these two techniques where we say that our button needs to be in the horizontal center of the phone, but it also needs to be constrained so that it's always 30 pixels from the bottom of the safe area. So now when our phone turns, it's going to keep all of those rules and it's going to look slightly different from before where it was just simply in the middle of the screen. But we're now using a combination of both alignment, which aligns to the center vertically or horizontally, as well as pinning, where we add a distance that our element needs to be from the edge of its containing view. So let's restore our size class to the iPhone XR. And let's think about how we can use what we've just learned. Now, if we go into the object library and drag on a new label, so just below our logo, and then go ahead and style and edit the label however you want. In my case, I'm simply gonna change it to a company tagline. And now I'm gonna change its color and I want it to be a little bit below my logo, but in the horizontal center of the app. So now here's a challenge. Add some constraints to the label to make it centered in the horizontal axis, but make sure it's also about 30 pixels below that logo, even when we turn to landscape. So pause the video and try to complete that challenge. All right, so the first part is easy. If we want it to be horizontally aligned in the center, we simply have to click on the alignment button and click on horizontally in center. And then we add that constraint and it's now in the middle. But now we get some errors because it doesn't know how to lay it out on the vertical axis. So should it be here? Should it be here? Should it be, where should it be? Well, now we're going to use our combo move where we click on the add a constraint menu and we set it to be 30 pixels from the app brewery logo. So let's change that to 30 
and we can click on the drop down list to make sure that we're actually putting that 30 pixels relative to the Appery logo rather than the view or the safe area or something else. So now let's make sure that again says 30 and then click add a constraint. And now the errors go away. And when we turn it to landscape, it'll still be in the center horizontally, but it'll be 30 pixels below the logo. So we've now learned about the two main type of rules that we can set or constraints, which are the alignment constraints, as well as the pinning constraints. In the next lesson, let's tackle some more complex layouts, namely our main dot storyboard, using some of the things that we've learned, but also creating some containers to embed our elements in so that we don't always have to align or pin it to the super view. For all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.